but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith, to the only wise God be glory forever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 24 to 38, and can be found on page 1026 in the Pew Bibles. Luke chapter 1, verse 24. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days he has shown his favour and taken away my disgrace among the people. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Another very familiar reading. So many times have we heard these same words over and over. Well, at least I have. I'm sure most of you have as well. But I wonder whether there was anything in particular this year that has struck you. I seem to have found that some years, one particular aspect of the story was either very new to me or sometimes seemed to be happening over and over and over again. The same kind of theme would happen. I can remember something that happened here about 30 odd years ago, which has stayed with me for such a long time. And I think some of you may have heard me say this before. It was at the time when Steve and Mary were here and uh, we decided to put on a little nativity play for the under fives. So we had what was called a pram service in those days, the, the forerunner of Messy Church, and we invited the playgroup children and their parents to come. So we had a Mary, I think we had two Marys, and probably three Josephs, and quite a few, I think maybe only one king, I'm not sure about that, and they all had to process up the arch. Do you remember when we had the pews, and there was this lovely line down the middle? And all the little girls who didn't have a part were angels, and all the little boys were shepherds, except some of them wanted to be the other, which didn't matter, that was fine, and they all sat there. I was narrating up at the front. And it all went really, really well, and everybody was quite happy, and at the end they all trooped out into the hall to have their mince pies and mulled wine. Except for one little girl and her grandmother sitting on the front row, and the little girl was sobbing uncontrollably. And I was really worried that something that we'd done or said had upset her. So I spoke to the grandmother and said, I'm so sorry. I said, what's wrong? And the grandmother said, oh, there's nothing wrong with her. 
She's just worried because they've all gone and left the baby alone in the manger. And that wasn't the end of it because the following year we did the same play and I remembered halfway through that I had forgotten to tell Mary to check to take the baby with her. So at the end, I turned round to see if anyone had remembered. And there was one little angel. Sorry, kneeling beside the crib. Just one. But that's all it took. And that memory has stayed with me for such a long time. And in fact, later that year, I think it was that year, maybe it was the year after, somebody gave me a candle, and I had a little figurine of an angel. Can we have the slide that's got that picture on? And when I put it together and lit the candle, there was the light of the world in a crib with an angel kneeling beside it. And that memory has stayed with me for such a long time. And I think in particular because we can learn so much from children, can't we? And Christmas is about children. But the passage we heard this morning was about Mary. Again, can we go on to the Annunciation picture? It was one I found with the angel coming. I wonder what she felt when that angel came. I was really quite impressed that she didn't take that, the word of that strange man for granted. She went to visit her cousin Elizabeth to find out whether in fact this was really going on. Don't be scammed by anything that you hear. Just check it all out. I think that's a good message for that. I wonder if she had any idea what she was letting herself in for. I wonder what her preparations for the birth were. Her first baby, I'm sure that her husband, being a carpenter, would have started to make some, a beautiful crib for that baby. And yet, things got changed, didn't they? I was listening to some people, some ladies the other day, talking about their preparations for this Christmas. And they were really worried about what was going to happen. One of their nieces was about to give birth. Um, another family had never spoken to each other for such a long time, and they were all coming together. And she didn't know whether the, that some of them had um, allergies and food things. That they, and she was really panicking about Christmas. And I'd just been reading this um, Lent, this, um, not Lent, Advent book that we've been looking at. And in it, it spoke about how that first Christmas was such a chaotic, different experience for Mary. And I said to this, I said, well, just remember the first Christmas, I don't imagine that Mary had expected to give birth in the stable. And she certainly hadn't expected some smelly shepherds to turn up on that same night. And when I said that, but then just think what a wonderful thing came out of something that was totally different from what they'd expected. And the person turned to me and said, you know, that makes me feel a lot better. I think maybe this Christmas I can cope with all the things that may go wrong. We can expect it to be perfect. But is it ever? I've heard so many people talking about how the problems that they face because of this Christmas, including this morning for some families, people coming, people going, what's happening? And really, it doesn't matter. All it matters is about what it's all about. And it's all about remembering that Jesus was there for them, with us. And talking about those smelly shepherds, perhaps we can go on to the shepherds. <clears throat> I wonder why it was shepherds that were the first to go and visit the new baby. I was thinking about this. I mean, there's been lots of things that have been said. One was that they were the only ones awake at that time of night, looking after their sheep. And it was the fact that they were probably one of the lowest in society. But the other thing I thought of, if Jesus had been born in a palace, they wouldn't have dreamt of going there. But a shepherd would have been quite happy to go and see a stable, wouldn't they? God meets us 
where we are. He tells us things in the way that we can understand. I've told some of you this story as well. Many years ago, when I first started going to a spiritual director, I asked her, how do I know when God is talking to me? And she said, well, you need to look for movement. What she meant was you look, need to look when you feel moved by something, which I think is quite a sensible thing to do. What I took it being as being literally when something moves. So if a bird flew across the sky or a branch of a tree suddenly waved, oh, God's speaking to me. And you know, because he knew that's what I thought, that's what he did. He spoke to me through those things. He will speak to you through something that is very familiar and very normal for you. I can remember many journeys to Stoke Mandeville with Nick that year that he was ill, seeing red-tailed kites flying along above us, knowing that was God's sign to me that he was there too. I was reminded as well of some of the signs that we may see. Do you remember years ago when Rod and Tina's shop was in the high street, they used to put signs on their window, and I've got some of them. Can we have the first one of those? Glory to God in the high street. The E was missing. And I found that really exciting that there, right in the middle of our high street, was a message about the fact that God, it was God. It wasn't just all about glitter and presents and lots of food. And then there was wise men seek him still. And I think my favorite one was the, the last one I can remember. Jesus is the reason for the season. And somebody sent um, a WhatsApp message this year with this particular picture. That's the season. That's the reason. That's the reason for the season. And so my prayer for you all, for all of us, is that maybe you have already been aware of God speaking to you through something that was struck you anew in the stories of this Christmas. Or maybe it was the words of a carol. I was just thinking how appropriate that carol that Stephen chose, I cannot tell spoke so movingly about the message of Christmas. That, for me, was my message from God this morning. But if you haven't already noticed him, look out for him in the next few days because God speaks to us. He wants to speak to each one of us in a way that is familiar and welcoming. And so I just want to end with this prayer. May the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be with us all this Christmas. Amen.